In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can take your Halloween festivities and sense of imagination and turn it into major manifestation tools using a concept known as ego magic and invocation. Try not to get hung up on the language spiritual community. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Authentic, Altruistic, and Aligned Living. My name is Kyle, Life Coach and Manifestation Mentor, and I also want to thank you for coming by to Episode 3 of Hacking the Law of Attraction with Chaos Magic. I just want to give a quick recap on Episodes 1 and 2. The links are going to be included above and below in case people need. Episode 1 speaks of a revelation I came to in my journey which is that today's, and I'm saying this specifically with the direct intention, today's modern 21st century secret style mainstream manifestation, as I call it, these styles of manifesting are truly just bred out of a larger magical system known as chaos magic. This isn't about better or worse. This is about when you become conscious of this, you can learn chaos magic, which gives you the ability to tweak, alchemize, hack, reprogram Law of Attraction beliefs, practices, and rituals to make manifestation more enjoyable, resonate better, and therefore more efficient with, for you. Episode 2 talks about establishing more magical vibrations and emotional bonds to those magical rituals, and here's why this is important. Based on Law of Attraction ideology, like resonating with like, as we feel better and feel more quote-unquote magical when performing manifestation rituals, the Law of Attraction, magic, universe, source, whatever term you use here, energy, will vibrate or resonate at that like frequency. As a result, your manifestations will now show up in your lives in more enjoyable, magical fashions, which is exactly what everybody is looking for, no? So that brings us to part three and the main points of today's episode. What is ego magic, evocation, and how do we use it? First off, let me just start by saying this. I know ego is a term that we have a negative connotation with in manifestation and magic and spirituality and the ego is just a tool that can work for us or against us based on what we do with it and how we interact with it. And ego magic is a good way to leverage our ego, leverage our natural interests, beliefs, and fascinations to empower ourselves, namely by, I know this sounds ludicrous, so keep an open mind, calling upon energy, consciousness, or spirits of a lot of times fictional characters. Or these can be characters in pop culture, media, songwriters, athletes, dependent on what's needed. We're going to explain this more, so hang in there. So before anything else, I'd like to share a couple quotations from the book Condensed Chaos from Chaos Magic expert and author Phil Hine. One aspect of chaos magic that seems to upset some people is the chaos magicians, or chaotist if you like, occasional fondness for working with images, called from non-historical sources. In the past, such criticisms have been raised over the subject of magicians working with fictional entities. In this section, I hope to argue the case against these objections. Now going forward, we're going to see why this is useful, and I just want to state this before I forget. I'm doing this now because people, like I said, are in that imaginative sense getting in touch with their inner child, being it is Halloween. You do not have to use any special Halloween energy here. If you're into those ideas, you can use it to amp it up. But if you come to this video later on or you don't think now's a good time, you can come back to this at any point in time. And it's extremely useful once you use imagination and you start to get the hang of it. I will say that I don't dress up for Halloween. I'm not that imaginative and it works amazing for me so if you are, there's a good chance it's going to really help you get to the next level. And now I want to explain why. So let's consider why this could be useful. 
Phil Hine gives an example of Spock from Star Trek. Now, I always consider using characters that you resonate with. So if you don't use, if you don't like Spock, you don't have to use Spock. It's just an example. But anyway, Spock represents, according to Phil Hine, superior logic. You could say he's the consciousness of superior logic. He is the manifestation of superior logic. Phil Hine continues and speaks about how you could manifest that element of Spock to grant yourself superior logic. In his example, you can use that logic of Spock or something he used to deal with computers that were working properly by the term that's used frequently nowadays, downloading or manifesting that superior logic of Spock, one now has better logic. One can now solve and overcome logical problems or opportunities that they may not have been able to previously. Now, I know this sounds very ludicrous and crazy, so I need people to keep an open mind. I want to get into why this works. So if people have a lot of resistance to this idea and this seems obtuse and ludicrous, let me explain. Let's examine ideas and simplify ideas of demigods, such as Greek demigods, Hercules, Theseus, Perseus, whatever, or ideas of spirit guides, and see how these relate to ideas of magic. All of these things are just larger than life entities. They're beyond belief. In simplest form, that's a good way to look at magic. That is which beyond belief, that which defies logical description. So, once again, going back to the Spock example, he has such logic that he defies logical description. Hopefully now we can start to see where this is going. Or how does this relate to demigods and spirit guides? See, once upon a time, the bird was perceived to be a spiritual animal, and if you still feel it is, that's great, because the way it flew really just transcended rational thinking at that point in time. As our modern heroes, our entities, you could call them pop culture deities, do. Once again, this does not have to be a fictional character. It can be an athlete. It can be a songwriter. It can be another spiritual teacher. It could be whatever in theory. Once you embrace the imagination, the potential here is truly endless. I want to state that. But with the logic, that should now be apparent. These guys, is what I'm saying, are the equivalents of this. For example, Superman, with his super strength, could be the modern interpretation of Hercules in certain ways. Now, I think the best thing to do is sh get authentic, and you guys can laugh and say this is ludicrous and crazy. I really don't care. I know the right people are going to get what I'm saying, and if you don't, well, then you can go watch How to Manifest in 24 Hours for, I don't know, the fifth time this month and realize how ludicrous that is to keep going back to that. But hey, that's your decision, guys. Anyway, the w I want to explain some of the ways I use this and encourage people to see past the examples to think about how they can use this. I don't want any sympathy when I'm saying this, but one thing that one opportunity I've had or several opportunities I've had growing up and with this channel are I have struggled with ADHD, bipolar disorder, and Asperger's, especially in the past growing up. As a result, talking to women has been rough for me my whole life, staying focused, holding down normal conversations, acting with charisma, acting with courage, not being so damn self-conscious has been very, very difficult for me, and I want people to know I'm still working through these things, and Eagle Magic has truly helped me embrace this and get through this. It's a big part I use in creating this channel. Anyway, what I do is one of many deities, servitors, um, conscious streams, whatever, or just personas that I evoke, I call upon, is that of James Bond 007. I know that doesn't sound spiritual and mostly the character from the books more so than the movies. I know that part's not really important. I'm just stating. 
Um, and what I've noticed through my own experience, principle two in motion, is that A, certain things that certain values I have have become accelerated, certain strengths that I saw within that character that I also feel I have, such as determination, willingness, tenacity, resolve, have increased. But more importantly for this certain case, a lot of those opportunities, such as lack of self-confidence, the inability to get out of my own way, yes, my dating game has improved because of this, Self-respect, I don't want to say alpha male here, but self-empowerment has definitely increased. I don't think it takes a genius to realize how whether or not you like James Bond is your own, that's your own cup of tea, I don't care. I'm sure some people can see the, the link here. Now, I don't just use that, it's not limited to that. I'm just trying to show some examples, but let me... Continue and give you some other examples. I use, because I don't really resonate with superheroes, I resonate more with detectives and secret agents for whatever reason. I use the logic of Sherlock Holmes. I call upon that. I'm already naturally analytical, but that's a good way. It just accelerates natural abilities I already have. I do that when I do a lot of these shoots. I do this when I come to things I don't understand or what I call universal magical mysteries. I want to make better sense of something. I may call on him to have his logic aid me. I'll also use a lot of Greek philosophers. I use Socrates to help along in that process, um, to live and manifest. I use Aristotle, which I'm not getting into philosophies and philosophers right now, but his idea of positivity to align to how to live more positively as opposed to thinking. These are other great examples of invocation and ego magic. A better way of just freaking out about the word ego is looking how to create a more empowering ego. Once again, ego is a tool that can be used for us, with us, or against us. It's not all good or it's not all bad. It's like all things. It's how we use these things that ultimately determine how good or quote-unquote bad they are. And with that being said on ego, if ego was truly bad, Based on definition, I wouldn't be doing this, nor would any other YouTube content creator, and you wouldn't be watching this right now, or trying to manifest, because it is that self, that sense of self, that in a good way can help, help us strive towards these things. Once again, not trying to just talk about principles, like I feel like a lot of Law of Attraction Vanilla does, I'm not trying to put it down, I'm just trying to impress, is this. Instead of just talking about principles, I want to show how the Principles of chaos and manifestation reflect in motion. This is definitely principle one, all things are permitted in motion, and principle number five, diverse approaches. And it's really not that foreign. This is also, as I said in past content, used by Napoleon Hill in Think and Grow Rich. He's using the same idea. And yes, I know Think and Grow Rich came out. Before chaos was realized, I'm not getting into that right now. And that's why I say modern style of Law of Attraction, but anyway. Napoleon Hill uses this idea of ego magic, evocation, when he calls upon Lincoln, Napoleon, so on and so forth. Certain businessmen to help all align to more or better business ideas with intention and understanding of what characteristics he's calling in. For Let me give you guys an example. Let's say that you are open to this idea of Ego magic and you're unsure, you're unsure how to feel more magical. Well, could you, let's say you like Harry Potter, could you try and manifest the persona or the magical abilities of Harry Potter to be more magical first before doing a ritual? Absolutely. freaking lootly You could do the same with Gandalf from Lord of the Rings if that's your cup of tea or something that just feels magical. You can use a spiritual teacher like I believe I've said. So if you want to understand, let's say, Esther Hicks's philosophies. You could try and call upon her consciousness or call upon Abraham himself if you want. There's really infinite possibilities. I use what resonates with me. I've just given a few examples. Let's say that you're someone, because I know this frustration too, guys, uh, you do things very, very, very well consistently, 
but when the when the pressure reaches a certain height and you let's say an opportunity is grace under pressure let's say you really like baseball let's say you really resonate with Derek Jeter you could call on Derek Jeter using diverse approaches and ask him to give you the ability to have extreme grace under pressure I think we can see why this is useful let me paraphrase Alan Watts here because I don't remember the exact quote but he does say at some point something like if he does say that the person that wants self-improvement is also the person that needs self-improvement. What he's suggesting is that if we knew how to get over these limiting beliefs naturally or become the person that was aligned to all our manifestations, why haven't we done it already? Well, that's a very good question. I think ego magic is a great way to transcend that and rise beyond that. The trick is, once again, to just work with what resonates with us. You might have to figure out why you like certain things, and it's best to work with things that you have, no pun intended, a special emotional bond with. This goes a little back to episode two, what I was talking about with the magical link and the emotional link. I have, I have a, I've always been a big James Bond fan, let's just look at it that way, and it's kind of a relationship that has grown with me over time, I'm not getting into it. I found other neat things, the author did practice hermetic philosophy and different ideas of magic so that definitely gave me more ability to believe in what I was doing and unlock more magical ideas and philosophies within myself. But these are examples of ego magic and just working with them. So in closing I just want to give some examples of how I use it to help people brainstorm once again with chaos not to put down LO, um, LOA 101 or LOA Vanilla, but I think there's a tendency to just kind of blindly follow the language like I've been saying. So you're going to have to be able to see past the silliness of this or the ridiculousness of this, and you are going to have to be also be able to see past my examples and consider how you might like to try these things. So how do I use diverse approaches to call upon these consciousnesses and manifest this? Well, one thing I do is I mix, amongst other things, um, this symbol, which will be its own episode. Uh, one thing I do is, after my morning meditation, I will put on some binaural beats or some, some music that resonates with what I'm thinking, feeling, makes me feel like I'm doing something quote-unquote magical or performing magic draw that symbol out, then I'll do another visualization and I might visualize something like as crazy as this sounds, as silly as this sounds, left if you want the gun barrel scene from the uh, James Bond movies where he walks up and shoots you instead of the blood coming down then I'll imagine the white light that we always talk about in spirituality and meditation that seems to serve me better and I actually use multiple I usually use three people at once to balance it out I'm not getting into all of that um, I'm not giving away all my hacks, all my secrets. That symbol does tie into it. That's going to be its own episode. But anyway, I just want to show how people use that. And yes, I go out into the world. I am more charismatic, more confident. I am still perfecting this procedure. But I think, not to brag, my content alone shows how this works. You're going to notice there's less pause times in this. I am more clear, I am more confident, I'm less worried about what the naysayers think here, and to me those are all qualities that I admire in one of the many servitors or consciousnesses or characters that are used. Now what does this do beyond, so what does this do beyond charisma and all that good stuff? Some people might be wondering, well, I've actually used this ritual to, because abundance is a focus for me, to grow this channel, grow my business from a local business to possibly something more online and expansive for you people who need it, is abundance and finance. So one thing I've done is I've used this ritual and I am going to, I promise, go more in depth on this on Halloween to get in the theme, but I've used this ritual where I call upon James Bond as a test to actually help win money through lottery. You could call on his luck too. One 
one of my greatest success stories is I turned fifty dollars cash at a casino into five hundred dollars at baccarat winnings, based on the logic that hey, I know that he's great at baccarat. That's something I can't do on my own. I'm gonna be perfectly honest there, and that's something that that meditation manifesting that helped, just like the Spock thing. With that being said, that wraps up this this episode, guys. I know it was unorthodox. I hope people did enjoy it, though. Um, with Halloween around the corner, and. I will be doing more with all of this chaos stuff, getting more on how you can use it, but I want to just present it and give the examples first. Going forward, I also did want to state that I was thinking of doing a ritual with puppy dogs, and initially I shot this, the symbol, and the puppy dogs all in one, and I want to, them all to be receive their undivided attention alone, so I haven't forgotten. So what I'm going to do is on Monday, I will do a little bit on sigils and symbols and why those are more effective magic and manifestation rituals from a magical and psychological standpoint. And next Friday, because Friday seems to be when you guys view, you guys tune in, I want to add a lot of value to you guys and finally show you guys how I made up my own chaos ritual manifesting with puppy dogs to show how you can you tie all the chaos principles together and start brainstorming your own rituals. People are free to try these things. If you have any questions about diverse approaches, please drop them in the comments below. I will be happy to see what I can do to help you out. With that being said, that does conclude this video, guys. Have a great day. Namaste. And if you're into Halloween season, I'd strongly suggest thinking about how you could use this to amp up your manifestation routine. Take care, everybody. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to hit the subscribe and bell notifications if you enjoyed it. If you're interested in learning how to manifest with magic, chaos magic, or just add some more magic into manifestation, or just your life, I'd be very grateful if you hit the hit the subscribe and bell buttons, and I know you will be too. Once again, there are two pieces of content every week. Thank you guys. Have a great day.